Florida presidential primary is in the books, and while a lot of races have clear winners, some are still too close to call. As no surprise, voter turnout, well, it was light across the board today. Palm Beach County had a little more than 22 percent. Martin County, 21 percent voters showing up today. And similar numbers in Indian River, St. Lucie, and Okeechobee counties as well. While the presidential election was at the top of the ticket, there were also dozens of city elections, including mayoral races, council seats, and referendums to be decided. CBS 12 News has team coverage tonight. We're going to get to those local races in a minute, including the Palm Beach Gardens annexation vote, but we begin with CBS 12's Lily Ortiz, who's outside of Mar-a-Lago this evening with the GOP presidential results, and as no surprise, a huge victory for the presumptive nominee. We're talking about former President Trump. Luli. Former President Donald Trump's lead was expected after his challengers dropped out of the race and also securing all the delegates needed to lock in a matchup with President Joe Biden this November. And it appears many voters didn't want to miss out on the opportunity to support Trump in the polls. Before officially being declared a winner in the Florida presidential primary election Tuesday, former President Donald Trump cast his vote on Palm Beach with his wife Melania by his side. Did somebody just say, who'd you vote for? Yeah, I voted for Donald Trump. Thank you. Mr. Trump is on his way for another White House rematch with President Joe Biden seeking another term in office. On the ballot, Trump's level of support from Republican voters showed it was strong in the polls, with Nikki Haley far behind and Governor Ron DeSantis ending in a third place finish. Earlier in the day, Trump spoke with reporters outside his polling location on topics related to immigration. He also slammed his New York civil fraud case and the jail sentence of former White House advisor Peter Navarro for his refusal to testify before the committee that investigated the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. The Biden administration treated him very, very badly. It's a shame, uh, but that's the way it is. He also spoke out after he previously made comments about Jewish Americans who vote Democratic. I think that the Democrats have been very, very opposed to Jewish people. That's true. And to Israel. All you have to do is look at Senator Schumer. What he did with Israel is a disgrace. And I think Israel will probably not forget it very soon. It's a very sad situation. Near Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate, a place where many supporters of the former president typically gather, we spotted only one, a Lake Worth Beach part-time resident. The very least I can do is come here and hold the flag and vote for him in the primary. Of course, election day, I'll be here to vote for him. Skiata shared why he voiced his choice for Trump. The four years that he was our president, we were safe. We had no invasions from foreign countries, from prisons. Uh, no American soldiers lost their lives in the Middle East. Um, gasoline was under $2 a gallon. Why would I not want to return to that environment? And the Florida Democratic Party decided not to hold a Democratic primary with Biden as the only candidate on the ballot. In Palm Beach, I'm Lily Ortiz, CBS 12 News. Okay, so here's the breakdown county by county for the Republican presidential nominee in Palm Beach County. The former president receiving 78% of the vote, 16% going to Nikki Haley, 4% to Governor DeSantis, and 1% to Chris Christie. St. Lucie County, Mr. Trump had 86% of the vote, DeSantis carrying 3%. And in Martin County, the former president taking 77% of the vote, DeSantis with 4%, a similar breakdown in Indian River County as well. And in Okeechobee, County, the former President Trump taking 91 percent of the votes. As Lily said earlier, Florida Democrats opted not to have a presidential primary. President Biden winning Florida outright. He also took Ohio tonight with a big win there, garnering 88 percent of the votes. Another local races are getting uh, detention tonight as well. Voters in Wellington selecting a brand new mayor, two term council member Michael Napoleon. He won easily over his opponent with 80% of the some 7,000 votes that were cast. Tom Carney is a newly elected mayor in Delray Beach. Three candidates were running against him for that position. Charlie Shaw taking the win for Green Acres mayor. He beat out Jonathan Pierce. Both men are longtime residents and former city council members. In High Paluxo, Michael Brown will remain the mayor there. He won by more than 100 votes. And in Juneau Beach, it was a race between current mayor Alexander Cook and vice mayor Peggy Wheeler. This was, by the way, the first time voters there in Juneau Beach got a chance to pick a mayor. Most of the time, they had been selected by the city council. Wheeler defeated her incumbent rival by about 170 votes. Over in Lake Worth Beach, four candidates vying for the mayoral spot. Current mayor Betty Rice, she will uh, fell short of the 50 percent 
That means she will have to face a runoff with her nearest challenger. That was Andy Amoroso with 31% uh, of the votes there. Lantana's incumbent mayor, Karen Lithgow, she is going on to another term. And in Royal Palm Beach, it's incumbent Frederick Pinto. He won his sixth term as mayor, beating a first-time candidate. Tonight's results, just a reminder, unofficial and still need to be certified. Voters in five areas in unincorporated Palm Beach County also heading to the polls to decide if they wanted to be annexed by Palm Beach Gardens. And the vote, well, it was lopsided. CBS 12's I-Team Chief Mike Magnoli is joining us live tonight uh, with the outcome. Mike. Hey there, Jim. As you know, a lot of people have been fired up about this, and I have to say we saw voters uh, steadily coming to this polling location over the course of the day. Now, as you know, there were five zones in contention here, and of those five zones, zone one was the biggest. So let's look at that. 2,000 people voted no, a little less than 200 voted yes, and I think that speaks to the fact uh, that the city knew that they had a hard sell here. The voters have spoken, and they just told City Hall, no thanks. For months now, the CBS 12 News I team has been covering the City of Palm Beach Gardens' master plan to grow its population and tax base and expand its borders to welcome in five residential areas that have historically belonged to the county. That plan has failed. Voters telling us they were afraid of higher taxes and strict code enforcement. They could not see the annexation benefits, only the bureaucracy. There's a lot of families that have been here for over 40, 50 years. They're on a budget and, uh, you know, economically, uh, things are going to go up for them. Robin Bundy waved a sign in front of the polling location at Cross Community Church. She was part of the coalition against annexation. She's a small business owner, and she says the county is a better business partner than Gardens, which she believes is trying to glitz up the whole area to the detriment of working class folks. This is going to change a lot of people's lives. That change won't happen. This is a vote to stay in the same lane. When I interviewed city leaders back in February, they told me they likely won't try this again. Here's me with Deputy City Manager Lori Laveria. Some people say if they don't get it over the finish line this time, they're going to try it again. Every 10 years, they try it. So at the end of the day, if that's something that's overwhelmingly a no, I think we'll reconsider what, what we want to do in the future. Back out with you live here. You know, a lot of folks at City Hall worked very hard on this proposal. Uh, if this had passed, the city stood to gain $2 million annually in tax revenue. Those tax dollars will continue going to the county now. I'm Mike Magnoli, CBS 12 News. All right, thanks, Mike. Well, the village of North Palm Beach also failed in its attempts to annex roughly 400 homes in unincorporated Palm Beach County. There was three different ordinances that were up for vote, and as you can see by the results there, uh, they were voted down. Juno Beach, by the way, voters there also asked to decide on a referendum. They approved requiring a unanimous vote by the council when deciding on the height and density of new buildings in the city. And as we mentioned, voter turnout was light, but Palm Beach County Supervisor of Elections says the county actually had one of the higher turnouts in the state with more than 22%. They were also no major issues, and this election appears to have run pretty smoothly. Zero line. It couldn't have been easier, so everyone should head on down. It cannot be easier. If you don't vote, then you know, you gotta live with what happens, so. I hope that my vote counts and I picked the right one. I always want higher turnout. <laughs> you know, so you know, I, I think the turnout is about what we expected, but I would always like for it to be higher. Are you disappointed? Uh, a little. I, I think I'm, I'm always a little disappointed if we don't if we don't break records. You heard uh, Wendy Satori link there saying she would have liked to see more voter participation in the 2020 primaries. By the way, nearly 27 percent of registered voters headed to the polls in Martin County. In addition to the presidential primary, residents also came out to vote for a new commissioner in the town of Sewell's Point. The county has 60,000 registered Republicans, only about 10,000 voted and more than half of them mailed in their ballots. This is a small town, right? So every vote really does. Every vote matters everywhere in the country, but it really matters right here in Sewell's Point, where we have, you know, probably less than 2,000 voters, if I had to guess. In Sewell's Point, all the residents there were able to vote for the new commissioner, regardless of political affiliation. The winner of that race was uh, Vinnie Barl, 
She uh, had 60% of the votes. And to see the rest of the results, you can head to our homepage at CBS12.com. We have everything listed for you, along with more information about the local races in each of our counties.